Recently on this channel, we've been looking at innovation in skincare and what's really stood out to me from talking to experts is that we're reaching a point where our understanding of how our cells interact and perform and how we can influence that to help them function optimally is the key to anti-aging therapies of the future. So today I'm talking to Carolina Ruiz Oliveira, who is the co-founder and CEO of OneSkin, a San Francisco-based company who've created skin therapies they believe can turn back the clock on our skin. They've produced what they call topical supplements for the face and body, which they say address the molecular changes associated with aging to not only boost our skin health, but our general health as well. So does this mean that if we apply these topical supplements, we'll all look 20 years younger in six months time? Well, not quite. But as an immunologist, Carolina has a fascinating take on why age masking treatments like Botox and fillers may one day be a thing of the past and why she believes products like hers that can work at a cellular level are the future of anti-aging treatments. I'll link in the video description to some of the studies conducted by Carolina and the team and to the products themselves, including a 15% discount code. But for now, let's hear what Carolina has to say about the fast evolving science around reversing some of the effects of aging on our skin. Carolina, thank you so much for sparing the time to talk to us on the Honest Channel. I want to start by talking a little bit about your background because you have a PhD in immunology, very impressively so. And so you, you clearly have a good understanding of cellular function. And with that background in immunology, why did you decide to um, get into skincare and start up a skincare company? Yes. Uh, so... I, I always was interested in, in science that I could see, you know, a potential to translate into, into something that would actually, you know, make a difference in people's lives. So during my PhD, actually, I studied stem cell biology and tissue engineering. And that's a fascinating area because there are so many opportunities to really translate this kind of science. Like we could grow human skins in the lab and uh, we could use this as a model to test like the efficacy of products that were already in the market. We were very interested in validating anti-aging uh, products because there are so many out there and it's mm. so, you know, overwhelming for the consumer. So we, if we could help, you know, basically distinguish the products that actually work, that are actually, you know, providing this rejuvenation effect from the ones that were not, I think this would be a lot of value. Very fast, we realized that none of the products were actually targeting what's driving aging at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we got familiar with this new science of longevity, of, you know, understanding aging biology in a way that if we know what's really causing aging, you know, at the cellular level, at the molecular level, we can now come up with better, you know, approach or interventions to act, actually, you know, uh, reverse that process or like control that process in a very safe way. Uh, so we saw very, you know, different companies targeting the same problem, uh, but focus on other like age-related diseases. And we saw that we could use the same approach to target skin aging as a way that we would translate this application, you know, faster to the consumer, and then we can expand from there. The scientific community discovered in the past like few years that one of the main drivers of aging is the accumulation of like aged cells in our skin. Mm -hmm. They're also called uh, senescent cells or zombie cells. So these are cells that have replicated uh, over like 50 times. So they, they shouldn't continue to replicate because they have accumulated so many mutations that they could become a cancer. Mm -hmm. So they stop replicating, but the flip side is that they start secreting inflammatory molecules around those cells. So basically one senescent cells start like spoiling the cells around that are still healthy to age faster. So we compare them with like a bad apple in a basket because mm -hmm. once you have like a bad apple, you spoil the good, you know, good apple. 
So what we are focusing on is to find the new molecules, uh, specifically peptides that are able to decrease the amount of those bad apples in our tissues, or I mean like the aged cells. If we can decrease the amount of aged cells in our skin, we allow the young cells to replicate, uh, to proliferate, and then basically we are rejuvenating the tissue from the inside out in a way that's very targeted. It's mm -hmm. specific because we are not like disturbing the healthy cells. We are just addressing, you know, what is the problem that's, you know, the accumulation of those damaged cells that end up like accelerating the aging process. Yeah. I mean, there are there are supplements out there on the market. I I had somebody, another um, YouTuber, Claudia Rolnick, talk about this on on this channel recently. There are supplements out there uh, that people can take orally um, to try to get rid of some of these aging cells, as you describe. I mean, why do that topically? Yeah, great question. I think supplements, they're definitely super important. They will, you know, treat your body from, you know, the inside out. Mm -hmm. But the effect or the impact of those supplements in the, in your skin will probably, you know, not as relevant as if you apply something direct on site, you know, direct on your skin. So when you apply it like topically, we guarantee that that molecule that we want to be acting, you know, by decreasing the amount of aged cells, it will be penetrating the skin, it will be, you know, working directly on that tissue. While, you know, if you ingest something orally, maybe a little bit of that effect will yeah. get to your skin. So it's not as, you know, targeted, it's not as specific. Um, and then there is also, you know, we can combine that molecule with other ingredients that will help your skin to perform better in, in many ways, like to be more hydrated, you know, to increase the skin barrier. So in the end, we would combine, you know, one treatment uh, with, you know, this main peptide with other ingredients that will support the overall skin health. And how does it um, access the, or, or how deep within the, the skin can a topical treatment penetrate? I'm always asked about that. Um, and there are sort of varying claims from different skincare producers, but how, how does your supplement um, access the skin? The main, you know, molecule behind our products is a peptide. Mm -hmm. So this peptide is, is small enough that can penetrate the skin barrier. So uh, also the formulation that we developed helps this penetration. So in our studies in the lab, we can actually test this. We can apply the cream topically. And then, you know, after 24 hours, for example, we separate uh, the dermal layer from the epidermal layer. And we send only the dermal layer to mass spectrometry. So we quantify exactly the amount of peptide that, you know, got into that layer. And then in the end, we know how much exactly peptide we are delivering. So we can calculate the amount that we need to put top clips in order to have like the effective concentration uh, that we are aiming for. So I believe that we are, you know, one of the very few companies that actually guarantee that our active is being delivered because most of the ingredients, like depending on the size, depending on the polarity, they won't actually, you know, cross the, the skin barrier that is designed to be a barrier. And are you exploring that through skin that you've grown in your labs? Is that how you're able to dissect the skin? Wow. So actually we are able to grow skins, you know, using cells from, you know, different ages. Uh, so very young, neonatal, to a very like adult skin, to an aged skin. So with that, we can really understand how the aging process is working. And then we treat the aged skins and we measure like how much we are actually reversing. We also use the skins that are uh, provided to us from like leftovers of plastic surgeries. So we actually use you know, natural human skin. And that's the one that we use for the, the penetration because the penetration, we want to make sure that we have the exact structure that we have in our own skin to make sure that we are being as, you know, accurate as possible to assess like the penetration. And these aging cells that are causing the problems, 
are they affecting the productivity rate of um, things like, you know, um, elastin and, and collagen? Or is that decline just part of an overall aging process in that just that slowing down the energy in our body that gets less? I mean, the, is, it, is it all kind of interlinked in some way or? Yeah. Aging is nothing more that accumulation of damage that we are not able to repair over time. So the difference, you know, that when we are young is that our cells, they are very efficient in terms of repairing damage. So we are exposed to, you know, sun damage, but, uh, you know, our skin cells are able to, you know, actually repair that damage and you don't feel uh, the effect of the damage. Over time, what happens is that our bodies becomes less efficient in mm. repairing damage. So we end up accumulating more damage that we are able to repair. And then those aging cells, we start to produce inflammation and inflammation will, you know, induce other cells to age faster. With more inflammation, what we also see is the increase of like collagen degradation and decrease in collagen production. So that's why we work in a way that we are trying to harness our own biology to work at its best to cope with all of those, you know, environmental stressors that are affecting us on a daily basis. So this peptide, for example, helps our cells to be able to repair damage more efficiently so we can prevent and we can also reverse some of the damage that has been accumulated. What I like about this, this new kind of of crop of more intelligent skincare products that are emerging is that, you know, in years gone by, we've been kind of masking aging. And then we've gone through the era of having all these um, very expensive cosmetic treatments and fillers and Botox and surgeries and heat-based skin tightening treatments. And it feels like now we're moving into a uh, slightly better informed age where we are trying to just impact at a cellular level, how our cells function, optimize that function and, and be able to sort of help regenerate the skin in that way. And would you say, could you imagine a time when we laugh about having things like Botox and filler? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think, you know, it's very clear that uh, as scientists, it's like we can in the in the in a lab, in a laboratory setting, we can clearly reverse aging from like a very, you know, old stage to a very, you know, young stage. So that reversing aging is possible. This is a fact. Now, you know, companies like ours and several scientists around the world are trying to translate all of those, you know, um, discoveries into products that are safe and that can be, you know, uh, accessible to consumers. I'd say in the next 10 years, we're going to experience, you know, huge breakthroughs in this area of longevity. Mm. For a long time, we're like just trying to treat the symptoms and mask like the, um, you know, the signs of aging. And right now we are trying to go to the root cause yeah. and actually, you know, uh, treat it there in order to have, uh, uh, I would say, an effect that comes from the inside out. It's not like just temporary. It's more like long term. So I think we are definitely evolving in terms of finding approach that can, you know, can bring both like can improve the health, but can also make you look better. But yeah. without, you know, sacrificing what's actually important to our health. You say um, we are we are able to reverse aging now. Now, within the limitations of a topical product, sort of understanding where you were saying we are in terms of research and development, but taking this topical product, product what kind of uh, results are you seeing over time? So let's take a 60 year old woman, okay, with quite advanced signs of aging, you know, lines, age spots, etc. What, what, if it over, prolonged use, what kind of results could that person expect to see? Yeah, so from our clinical studies, we have seen improvement in all parameters related to, you know, the appearance of your skin. So fine lines, wrinkles, 
uh, aged spots. We do have a lot of data supporting that our peptide, you know, helps regulating melanin production. So it has a very clear effect on improving the skin tone, um, firmness. So because it 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 will take some time, you know, for you know people that are more advanced in their age, it will take some time for the peptide to penetrate to start to like you know change kind of the makeup of your skin. But you can see these results with long term, you know, with long term use of the product. Obviously, the earlier that you start using, you know, the better. It's always easier to, you know, help your skin when it's still in a healthy state than when you are like trying to reverse a lot of damage that has been accumulated. And obviously, we needed to leverage expectations that there is only so much that we can do with a topical product. And eventually, you know, you can combine uh, your topical treatments with like some clinical procedures that will actually work where the, you know, our products can't go. So, for example, some lasers and, you know, things like that can go a little deeper that our product goes. One thing that I can say is that the more that you use, you know, the more consistent you are, the better mm -hmm. the results. The results are cum cumulative uh, and uh, our customers, you know, have seen progressive, better results over time. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of my viewers will say, listen, I would love something like this. Um, I can't afford it. You know, it's an expensive product. What can they do out of the range of skincare? It's absolutely bamboozling. I find it bamboozling and I spend time exploring these things. But what would you give your thumbs up to in terms of a skincare regime? And is there anything out there? I mean, there's question marks over things like hyaluronic acid and whether that actually is is um, disrupts your skin barrier. I mean, one one approach that we bring that a lot of times less is more. So instead mm. of like using five, you know, four to six different products, maybe, you know, simplifying and using one or two products and investing on products that have like better quality, you know, uh, that have been like clinically, val clinically validated. First and foremost, like don't use products that are not clean or safe. So always check like the ingredient list because if the products are not clean, the chances that you're ca causing more harm than good to your skin is huge. And then that's what you don't want. How do you um, mean clean though? That can mean so many different things. What? What? How would you check that product's clean? Uh, you can check in different ways. There are like uh, some apps or there, there is, for example, the EWG score that you can mm -hmm. go and put it, each ingredient and you can see the rate. If the rate's like very low, it's usually safe. If the rate's, you know, around three to 10, it's you should watch, watch out for those ingredients. But we have our product validated by Skin Safe. Uh, so they check all the ingredients and they check, you know, uh, if this could cause any toxicity, mm -hmm. if it's safe for sensitive skin. I think it's a product safe for sensitive skin is the best validation because anyone can actually use it. Okay. So these are some suggestions. So you could start there. The, the last thing, don't forget sunscreen, you know, oh, yeah. the, like number one, any day, winter, summer, you know, at home, that's like number one rule because it's, you know, the, you know, the most effective defensive against aging. Very true. Very true. Even I use it in Scotland, which is very optimistic, yeah. but I do. I mean, you don't see, but you are actually getting those UV rays even in a cloudy day, even in the winter. So super important. That's true. Thank you so much for your time. It's much appreciated. I hope we get you back one day. Yeah, for sure. Happy to continue this conversation another time. Thank you so much for having me, Claire. Fabulous. Thank you. Bye.